Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. This might not be a jackpot worth millions and millions of dollars, but we all know that there is one special person that every single team, not even in the lottery, really wants to get their hands on. In fact, there are three special people coming out this draft this season, which makes this the perfect time to actually be in the lottery. However, this is not the video that I know you guys want. I'm not going to spend this time talking about all the players that are coming out this year. I'm going to save that for a couple weeks later, closer to the actual draft, okay? This is the video that's going to be talking about the draft selection. My opinion doesn't matter, but hey, we all seem to want to voice our opinions. I decided to give you guys mine. So let's just jump into this, guys. A typical thing that a fan can say, oh, the draft lottery, that should be easy. Let's just could do it by the standings. Okay, um, if that was the case, then it would be Mystics, Mercury, Tulsa, and then the Sky. No. No. Fans aren't going to have that. Fans are not going to have that. Here is my opinion. The team that deserves the number one draft pick is the team that's been deserving it for the past couple of seasons now. And that is the Tulsa Shock. I can honestly say that I have more respect for the Tulsa Shock than I do for some teams that are even in the playoffs right now. Everyone can clearly see that there are certain teams that are losing on purpose. Nobody ever wants to be called that. Their fans try to stick up for them and say, oh my god, they would never do that. Like, you just don't do that. Bruh. You do anything you need to do in order to get your hands on Brittany Griner. Come on now. Let's just be honest. Teams, let's just say, even if you don't agree with that, you still can agree with the, if there's a, some games where you just know that you're really not going to win, why even try? And coaches have told their players that they hold off on their key players or whatever. They bench them. They get them their rest. Okay. But um, Tulsa has not done any of that. We all know Tulsa struggles. They've always sucked. You know, they're just a sucky team, okay? This year, they made a couple of moves. You know, at least they tried to. They they got in um, Tamika Johnson, who's a veteran point guard. And um, they people don't really understand. It's so quick to say, oh, well, Phoenix is hurt. You know, or, you know, all these other teams, they're hurt. They're missing players. People don't look at Tulsa. Seriously, nearly every single player for Tulsa this season has gone through some kind of injury. They've been dealing with pregnancies. They For the past two years, they've had like two players deal with pregnancies. They've had injuries. Um, freaking Liz Cambage. I don't know why people are shocked that she didn't return after the Olympics. Did she not come into the league as a rookie saying she only wanted to play here one year? Liz Cambage is not coming back. I'm sorry. Don't get your hopes up, okay? But anyways, it's like they're having so many players like abandon them. And um, despite all that, they're still overcoming. There's many games that they had. They held the Lynx really strong. They've held um, top teams like Silver Stars, you know, really good teams. And then they would fall off in the end because they don't have, like, say, a Kobe. They don't have someone to put the ball in the hoop, you know, at the end. How many times did the freaking Sparks and Shock go toe-to-toe? -to -toe? And Shock eventually um, got the win over the Sparks. They can um, just go out there and not even try, you know, because according to, like, the actual rules, um, losing percentage and stuff like that is all about percentages as to, like, who gets the number one draft pick and where you where you end up in the lottery. Tulsa's like, I don't give a crap about that. Um, the coach, the new coach, I don't even know his name, which is sad, but the new coach, he's like, yo, I want my team to, to get as many wins as possible. I don't care, you know, about losing so I can have a higher um, percentage rate to get a key player, you know. It's like, I just have so much respect for Tulsa. I truly do. Next team. 
I guess if you want to throw it in there. So, yes, clearly the number one draft pick, in my opinion, it should go to Tulsa because they waited so long. They've never gotten the number one draft pick. And that's exactly why the Washington Mystics do not deserve the number one draft pick. Oh, they had the worst record. Guess what? Tulsa freaking set WNBA records for having the worst record. And they never got the number one draft pick at all. They got number two. So how about we go ahead and give Washington the number two pick? Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Um... Washington, yeah, they sucked. But here's my thing. Do I have pity for them? Hell no. You know why? Nobody ever wants to call out the teams that might be losing on purpose. Let's look at this, okay? <clears throat> Washington sucked last season. We all can agree on that. So what the coach goes and does is trade away her actual good players. She traded away Nikki Anasike. She traded away Elena Beard, who we all seriously know deserves the freaking most improved. Honestly, as a Sparks fan, I can say, regardless of Candace Parker being freaking awesome and Christy Tolliver being clutch, there is the team wouldn't be the team if it wasn't for Elena Beard. She's the leader. Seriously. And it's like, did the Mystics not get the memo that Elena Beard was back, that she was going to be freaking phenomenal? Did they not ever see her in training camp or something so they just threw her away they gave away Rissy who's struggling with the Sparks but well she was struggling with the Mystics too but still it's like they just gave away people for what in return you trade away most of your good players and then you expect to be better than you were last season even though that season sucked that's just really ignorant and um, to my understanding coach just got fired honestly I'm not even gonna waste my breath on Washington they don't deserve to be talked about what that organization did this season. It's just disgraceful. They don't deserve anything. I really want them to be cut. Sorry, Mystics fans. It's just, that's not what you do. Mercury fans, come close. Okay? Come close, okay? I'm going to say this really, really clear, okay? <clears throat> you guys are not getting the number one draft pick. Okay, do you understand that? Let me say it again. There is no way that you people are getting the number one draft pick. And before you click exit and dislike the video, first of all, let me say, shut up. Stop whining. If you're a Mercury fan and you've been whining for this and about this season and, you know, complaining and all this stuff, dude, who are you? You're not even like a real Mercury fan if you can't see what is brewing right now. I'm not a Mercury fan, but it's common sense that the Mercury do not have any problems at all. I'm not going to sit here and say every single thing that should be so freaking obvious. It's just injuries, dude. Diana Taurasi was injured, and then she decided not to play. It's as simple as that. I've even got Mercury fans to admit. It's like, dude, Diana Taurasi, of course she could have played many games that she did not, but she... Whatever. For Mercury, they're doing their own thing. Um, Corey Gaines thinks he's slick, but people are finally starting to realize what's going on. Um, the Mercury are trying to do stuff up their sleeves, you know, pull stuff up their sleeves, but they forgot that they're wearing um, a freaking tank top. Like, it's so obvious, you know? You already know that you're missing most of your players. Season is bad. You're losing games. Well, to hell with it. Let's just let the games go. That's what the Phoenix Mercury do. Everyone except for Bonner. Bonner did not get that memo. When Corey Gaines grabbed his entire team to talk about, hey, let's lose games, Dwight Dewana Bonner did not get that memo. Mercury fans, y'all need to shut up. Y'all aren't getting the number one pick. If for some reason in the world that the WNBA like passes the number one pick to you guys, the WNBA will be like completely over. They're, the fans aren't going to watch. I think we all can. I think we all can agree. No one is going to watch the WNBA if somehow in hell the number one or number two draft pick at that or number three. Hell, y'all don't honestly. Mercury doesn't even deserve to be in this lottery. They should kick y'all out because y'all don't deserve crap. Mercury, besides the Sparks and the Lynx, of course, Mercury is a very stacked team. Gee, let's look at the numbers. <laughs> Diane Taurasi, Penny Taylor, Candace Dupree, Dewana Bonner, okay, gee, that's four key players right there. All those four people that I just named, they could be all-star. Well, they already are. 
but they're going to be in the All-Star game in the freaking West, dude. Um, gee, okay, what if we get the third or fourth? You guys can't do that. You know why? Because you already have a point guard. You people, this is what makes me upset about the Mercury fans. You guys don't even understand what a steal you got in the draft last year. Samantha Perales is a beast, my dude. Like, you have no idea how bad I wanted her. You know what the Liberty would look like right now if they had Sammy? Bruh. We'd be, well, we are in the playoffs by default, but dude, we would be really, really good. You guys have no clue what Sammy is capable of. She was out there getting little numbers um, for a good minute, and she had nobody to pass to. She's a one guard. She's not a two guard. She has to pass to somebody. So when she finally has someone great, um, gee, let's set up Diana Taurasi. Let's set up Penny Taylor. I don't know like how the rotation is going to work. She's not going to be a starter, but dude, y'all got to steal. I think you guys had the number seven draft pick last year, one before the Liberty, but um, you guys got to steal, so shut up, stop crying, you're going to be back in the freaking playoffs next year, honestly, I have nothing to say to Mercury fans, y'all got to steal last year, y'all's entire freaking, y'all are good, alright, for real, I'm done with Mercury fans, goodbye. Um, moving on to the sky. I feel so bad for Sky fans. Let me say, I don't know. It's very it's clear that I run um, a Cappy Pondexter fan page on Twitter. And um, I'm a clear Liberty fan. But I'm probably one of the only people that will admit. Don't tell people this. I'll probably like the only Liberty fan that will admit that the Sky as a team... They deserve to be in the playoffs, definitely. The Sky deserve to be in the playoffs. I will say that. Cappy, Cappy Pondexter deserves to be in the playoffs too. That's the problem. But the Sky as a team deserve to be in the playoffs. And I think that it's just common sense that if Epiphany Prince would have never went down, I think she missed like about six or seven games, and the Sky went on a six and seven game losing streak. Remember, Epiphany Prince was the number one scoring leader at the time. Nobody was even close to her. Everyone's been getting like 22, 23. She was getting like 30 back to back to back. If Epiphany Prince would have never had that little um, leg injury, dude, <clears throat> Liberty wouldn't have been anywhere near the Chicago Sky in the little playoff race that we had. So, um, yeah, I really do feel bad for the Chicago Sky. They deserve to be in the playoffs. That's just another reason why they don't deserve to be in the lottery because their team, of course, you can always say, oh, well, you can always add on to a team. Okay, that's true, but as far as the sky goes, they have a nice group of people. I guess they would probably need like one more big so Big Sill won't have to um, depend on everything. You know, people will stop depending on her. As far as guards, I don't know if y'all noticed, Vandersloot is really starting to come into her own. And it's scary for me since I'm in the East, but Vandersloot, I'll say about one or two more seasons, that girl, you're going to be able to count on her down the stretch for real. And you already have Prince who thinks that she's Kobe, you know, you might as well give her that name. And um, you already have Big Seal, you know. But I don't know, you guys. Well, see, I keep trying to talk about the job because I was about to say, remember last time Sky had two bigs, it didn't really work. I don't know. I'm not really sure Big Seal is ready to give up her entire Oval Office. You know? I don't know, guys. We're going to talk about that later. But um, I don't really have anything to say to Chicago Sky fans. I guess I could say I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cappy such a beast. <laughs> she started scoring, <laughs> like, freaking 30 points to get the Liberty um, into the playoffs. I'm, I'm really sorry. So, basically, the moral to this entire video is I'm saying um, that if the Mercury were to get anywhere near the number one draft pick nobody's gonna be excited and me personally I can honestly say that I'm gonna take a step back from the WNBA because I don't care what people say oh that's the way the freaking dice rolled um, if you can sit here and say that the freaking president or commissioner or whatever of the league can't control it then you're just dumb really you're dumb all I'm saying is Mercury are good, Sky are good, two teams that suck, <laughs> Washington and Tulsa. Tulsa deserves it because they fought for it. I respect them. Washington, I don't respect them at all, but it's not the players' fault. It's their entire coaching staff's fault. Tulsa, number one, 
uh, Washington number two, number three. I, was, I don't even care no more, dude. It's not really about the numbers. It's just unfortunate that three great players are coming out, two bigs and one point guard. If you look at it, see? No, no, we're not even going to do this. Let me go. <laughs> Bye, everybody.